Now the wind's dropped off a bit. Crows fighting wind, if the pigeons weren't fast enough already. We were at the British Shooting Show, stalking the shareholders, fishing for compliments, and many of you were there too. Plus, solo stalking, Tim meets another info-rich roundtree, this time on the east coast of Scotland, offering people the chance to hunt unguided. There's news, there's hunting YouTube, there are the results of the Beater of the Year competition. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. on the lookout for birds. It's not just the head that's moving, the feet are on the go too. That was Irish dancing, David. The board keeps him from driving himself into the ground like a hide pole. The, the ground is so, so wet. This old ground, it's heavy old clay, and once you start moving about, twisting and turning, you're not long turning it to a load of old, load of old mush. The last time we were shoulder to shoulder with the crow man was when he was on the sky high pheasants at the Upperwood estate. We may not have the stunning Yorkshire countryside, but Mr. Crow is still having to deal with some challenging birds. It's a windy day. Now the, now the wind's dropped off a bit. It's too windy, really. It seems silly, but some people like a lot of wind, and I oh, know I don't. That's why I keep off the baked beans. I just say that. Cut. <laughs> it's plenty blowy enough. What they're doing is they're coming, usually they come along the top of this hedge line, follow it along, and then cut back down. Either come out on the maize here or cut back down. What it is, we've got a, a cover crop of maize here that they've chopped some of it off, and just over the brow and right the way along, we've got a field of. Uh, of all seed rape and the pigeons what they're doing they're feeding on air and, and hammering the rape as well so but they've been flying along a, a shore below us along the top of the wood so if they keep doing that I'll up sticks and go and stand there and fly so I'm coming along now. The maize has served its purpose well as a cover crop offering a plentiful supply of food and not only for the game birds. When Andy arrived to set up it was teeming with life. When I got here this morning, there must have been a thousand chaffinches, goldfinches, loads of finches here. Leslie does feed wild bird seed for them anyway, and, uh, but they're on it. They're on it as, as well as... Look at that. Care if I didn't shoot another one all day. Missed it the first bow, just didn't give it enough. Just give it a little bit more with the second bow, and in that wind to kill that bird, that was something else. Nah, no, that was some bird, that. A couple more coming in in front here. These are, these are decoy and David on the decoys. And he's happy that most of the birds are dropping on impact. Finding them in this wind if they fly on would be a challenge, even with Rosa's nose. And that was one of his key requirements when Game Ball developed the load for his own version of the Game Ball Clear Pigeon. It's got to be a shell that drops birds. When I miss, it's me, not the cartridge. If I'm, if I'm putting a shot in the right place, it's killing them. Every cartridge has got its limit. And I've, I've got got to fit the feel of these cartridges now and I know what their limits are. Well, it's your recipe, mate. Well, it is, yeah. Um, yeah, and thanks to Phil, really. Uh, 
at Game Boy, he's the bloke that's been playing about with them. And he's got them, got them where I want them now, so. Got one here, David, one here. Bit too far, that. More, loads more coming low here, look. One coming straight on here, look. Look at look how he's diving about in the wind, look. See how he's diving? We have brought the NCAM glasses along for Crow to try. We get a couple of shots, but the cameraman, who shall remain nameless, David, left it recording in his bag, so he filled up the card before we had a chance to get going. You get the idea. The pigeon numbers have built up to such a level here that other guns are scattered across the farm to keep them moving. And moving they are. Andy always talks about shooting them on a line. But these are dipping and diving. There's no line to be had. There ain't no straight lines today. Come in, come in, come in. Because, like you see that one just a minute, it was coming, it just twisted its wing, and it was like another 50, 60 yards away. Oh. It's been good shooting though. It's been seriously good shooting. The weather is getting wetter and colder. Crow fancies leaving the hide and dropping down behind us, where the birds have been following the shore. A few, few pigeons starting to flight along, along the shore below us. They've been going along there most of the day, but I just thought they eased off, they're not coming up here at all now, so I thought, go and sit down here for half hour. Maybe shoot ten or a dozen. I might put my freaking coat on the tell the truth. I don't want to get wet. David, I am a hardened shooter now. Do rain now. I do rain. Yeah, yeah I'm, in, I'm in the rain now. Yeah, I don't mind rain. We've got some new jackets out from Jack Pike, this is one of their, this is their new Hunter one. It's a new Hunter jacket. For hunters? For hunters, yes, yeah, so it's for me. They've got matching trousers as well. They're for hunters as well. Hey? I'm watching your mic, it's very smart. It is. You like it, don't you? Stands out in the corner. Oh, for Christ's sake, David. So does your orange on your jacket. And I've got matching trousers, but I ain't gonna put the matching trousers on. Right. Cometh dog. He has a handful of shots and starts getting poetic Good on girl. us. Good girl. Good girl. So you say it's loose, bro? What do you mean? That's not loose, it's just not tight. Don't take note. <laughs> What's that mean? Well, it's just... When you open it, it, when you open the top lever, it just falls open. Shut's lovely. Crisp gun. Hold on, it's crisp now. Well, it is. Loose, crisp, all means the bloody same <laughs> thing, man. Loose and crisp is the same thing. Look, look. It falls open. Shut's lovely. Does that make it crisp? I like it. Because you ain't got to worry about when you've... the pigeons are coming, when you're in hiding the way. You ain't got to worry about opening it. Not really hammering it to get it open. It just falls open lovely. It's crisp. It's lovely. So, loose, crispy loveliness about the F-16 from Crow. Eventually, the brisk weather beats us and it is time to pack up. Some long pigeons in, David. That's cold up here. Andy has 67 birds and a neighbouring rape field has had a break from the beaks. Good job Andy and great to see him and Mrs Crow at the British shooting show this last weekend which also explains why I'm losing my voice. Andy is a true countryside hero, a very popular chap 
And now the housewife's choice. It's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Our share offer has raised £21,000 in a week. Shareholders are now looking at funding a number of different films to promote hunting and shooting and help stop the antis take control of the internet. Our Field Sports Nation invested from £10 up to thousands each, with some friends of the channel getting all creative. Matt Barker is auctioning off the opportunity to go hunting with him for Muntjac or Row in the summer to raise money for the share offer. For more, go to his Facebook page, Optical Armoury 1. Meanwhile, our jumble sale at the British Shooting Show raised nearly £1,000, which we'll use to make small grants to people who defend field sports in media to help them cover travel costs. North Yorkshire Police has launched a formal operation to catch people killing birds of prey. Operation Owl is a public awareness campaign across the Yorkshire Dales National Park and the North Yorkshire Moors, home to many of the best grouse moors. The initiative has been six months in the making and is the brainchild of Sergeant Kev Kelly, who was named the National Wildlife Law Enforcer of the Year in 2017. Gamekeepers, including Will Watson from the Nidderdale Moorland Group, are supporting the operation. The RSPB blames gamekeepers. Antis say they're delighted with the protest they organised in the Dorset town of Sherborne. As many as 10 people protested against the local hunt outside a branch of Waitrose. The North Dorset Badger and Hunt Watch team page has now closed, according to a report in the local paper. Western Australians have got together for a big community pest control day. 177 entrants to the Boyup Brook Red Card Fox Shoot competition shot around 1,000 feral animals over the weekend, with rabbits worth 2 points, foxes 10 points, cats 15 points and feral pigs 20 points, correlating to the level of damage they caused to Boyup Brook's native bushland and animals. They shot more than 700 foxes, but organisers point out there's plenty more where they came from. The six members of the winning team shot 56 foxes, 3 rabbits and a cat. The next big shoot in the area is mid-March. Indiana is considering bringing back bobcat hunting. The sport has been banned in the US state for the last 50 years as bobcat numbers recover. The Indiana Department of Natural Resources says that reopening the hunting season is a triumph for conservation. Meanwhile, Montana is taking a year off from bear hunting. And finally, Packham is extending his virtue again. Speaking at a debate organised by Soap Shop Lush, which funds the Violent Hunt Saboteurs Association, BBC TV presenter and animal welfare campaigner Chris Packham criticised conservation charity the RSPB, of which he is Vice President for accepting sponsorship from binoculars manufacturers who promote hunting. He singles out Zeiss, Swarovski and Nikon. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now it's time to find out who wins the Beater of the Year 2017-2018, a photo competition sponsored by Sealand and by Skinner's Pet Foods. Well, thanks to all of you for entering, and the winner is chosen by Sealand and by Skinner's. Drum roll, please. OK, no drum roll. Dead Things by Kate, who posted this picture of a lad called Oscar on her Instagram. Oscar, she says, turned up to beat throughout the season come rain or shine. Well done, Dead Things by Kate. And hundreds of pounds of clothing and dog food will be heading your way. Next up, a quick spin round the British Shooting Show 2018. Some felt that the British shooting industry couldn't fill the NEC. They were wrong. Being part of that industry, it was wonderful to see. Not only did the people come, but the manufacturers delivered, creating impressive, bespoke stands costing tens of thousands of pounds, giving the whole event a gloss. One of the things that we, we've never seen in the UK is a show of this nature. Um, the trade are so used to doing the likes of the SHOT Show and IWA. And I really do believe now that we have our own version of that here in the UK and certainly the, the manufacturers have gone over and above and I think the, the 
the experience that the general public and the trade have, have seen over the last two days has just been absolutely phenomenal. It really is a truly international show now. SHOT Show and EWA are known for the kit launches. Brands spend money on those launches, which again gives the punter a reason to come. The Mauser M18 has just arrived on these shores. Having new things always helps. I think there's such movements now in the industry. There's some really exciting, not just from us, but there's so much exciting stuff happening. Technology is moving on, night vision is becoming ever more affordable. There's so much going on and that is exciting and I think it, it, it's a good time to be in this industry. A company based within a stone's throw of the NEC is BSA. They had to go large with their new rifle, the Defiant. The reception to the rifle so far uh, has been fantastic. This is BSA's first ever bullpup. It's BSA's first ever side lever as well with this new mechanism, um, which we're particularly proud of. A lot of mechanisms and cocky mechanisms on bullpups tends to be somewhere near the rear of the gun, which uh, often means that the shooter is fumbling around uh, somewhere near his ear trying to cock the gun. This one's forward, so if I can just shoulder this and show you exactly what I mean. Um, when I'm in shooting position, easily can cock the rifle, close it off and get that shot off and then repeat. Really easy. You're making quite a statement here, John, but the NEC has given you the ability to do that. Yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're three miles away from where we've manufactured for the last 170 years. So how could we not go big at the British Shooting Show? We're trying to give an industrial look and stage for our products, but also show off our company heritage uh, and history that we should never forget. And also the Peaky Blinders are wandering around. The series has been really popular over the last few years. BSA had quite a few mentions in the early parts of the series, so we've tied up with Garrison Taylors here uh, at the show this year. Of course, it's not just the big boys in town. This dog blanket manufacturer is from Denmark. The products use bamboo and motorsport technology to create a super absorbent layer for the wet, and it keeps the dogs cool in the heat. The reason why we are using bamboo is because it's antibacterial. That means there's no smell of a wet dog and also super uh, absorbent and fantastic to work with. So we have the combination of, of uh, drying a dog really quickly and without any smell. Tell me about the show, is, what do you think of it? People here are very serious, they know the business. <laughs> they, I mean, when we came out in the market, it was like, oh, are we going to spend so much money on drying a dog? Why not buy a new dog and all that crap? <laughs> and here, they kind of, they respect their dog, they know their equipment, they are, uh, it's just another crowd. It, it has been a really good show. As well as good ideas, there were good causes on show too. Gunsmith Chris Bartlett from Ronnie Sunshine's got creative and set to work on Sorry. a BSA Scorpion. He got so carried away, they decided to raffle it for charity. So we're raffling it for the British Legion. There's 300 tickets in total. They're 20 pounds a ticket and you could win this rifle, which is completely unique. Serial number, which you should have on there commemorates the end of the First World War and on the other side of the gun we have in aid of the Royal British Legion, lest we forget their motto. Contact them via ronniesunshines.com for more information. We were there too. And this is British Shooting owning the NEC. We had our first ever stand and we had a ball. Thank you all for your kind words, your encouragement and if you were generous enough to buy shares in Field Sports Channel, we are especially <laughs> grateful. See you all back at the British Shooting Show in 2019. And as I said in the piece, it was great to meet so many of you and to find out how you watch Field Sports Channel. Callum Harris, who's studying gamekeeping at Lackham College in Devon, says it's part of his coursework. Now, hunting and shooting can be like a box of chocolates. Sometimes you want to share, sometimes you want to be left alone to stuff your face. Well, Tim Pillbeam has found an outfitter who encourages a sugar rush.
all that fee sometimes. Oh, I, I love this this concept, getting out on our own. Yeah. And you know, yeah. I don't know the ground. Long as I come away thinking I've done all I can, if I made a mistake, learn from it. And we'll crack on and do it again sometime. But there's nothing, there's nothing guaranteed with this, and that's the part that I really, really enjoy. What we've got to do is tap into the resource of stalkers who are keen and capable mm. and can assist with the culling pressure necessary to achieve all the targets we've been set. So one of the things I want to see is this volunteer army, for want of a better phrase, deployed effectively. And that means actually giving people the opportunity to, uh, if they can demonstrate that they're accurate shots and that they've met the deer standard, you know, the DSC2, DMQ2 qualification, that they are fit to go and uh, do their thing. And what we do is basically offer a bit of logistics and backup if it's required, and that allows us to carry on an important function which is allowing the government's ambition to have an increase in forest cover take place where these schemes have gone ahead and maintain deer population at levels where they don't damage the crop. We, we know where the boundaries are, we know where the marches are, but we've got to find some deer. So this is the challenge. Yeah. Yes. Now you know where they are. <laughs> well, when you said we've got to find the deer, well, okay. It, it, rem <laughs> it, remind, well, no, it reminds no, me of that famous it, quote: "You know, when, when Tonto and the Lone Ranger suddenly decided they're surrounded, and, and the Lone Ranger says to Tonto, he says, Tonto, he says, we're surrounded by Indians.' He says, what do you mean we? <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the extraction because that's one of the first things when we're when we're looking into this project. But wow, how we get these beasts out? There are one or two rides through the wood and one or two access tracks to its periphery, but the bulk of it requires a fairly daunting amount of physical effort to get the animal out. Okay, okay, right. daunting. Yeah, but I must say I've I've, I've actually packed two straps. That's great one's news. for me, yep. and one's for David. So if he thinks he can hold that camera, if he thinks he can hold that camera all afternoon, I've got a beast. You are pulling, young man. So do not, yeah, you're in on this as well. <laughs> doing a lot of glassing, I'm trying to work out what, what the best thing to do really because I know we know the beasts are in there somewhere. I can see into the wood as well so I'm just kind of working out a bit of a plan really as to how we go about it. Um, something spooked some stags, there's a load of stags over there and they've just been bumped across there and my slight concern is, is whether they've bumped any of the other beasts down in the further down the valley so I'm just, just biding my time a wee bit so let's let them settle down a wee bit. Basically what I want to do is, is I want to see, I want to look into, that, into, into the bottom of that, that burn there. Because I imagine as the wind's coming over, the, the beast will be kind of sheltering in there. But if I do that, I'm going to win that wood. So I don't really want to do that. Um, and the wind's turning a bit more westerly as well, so I'm slightly conscious we need to kind of move fairly soon. So I think what we can do is just head, head east and go around the top. Maybe spot, spot some beasts up on the top there. Then we come over the top and then drop down on the top of that, uh, that forest down there, I think, that part of the forest. Decisions. I'll try and make a plan here. The beasts are there somewhere, probably about half three quarters of a mile away. I know they're this side of the, the couple of nollies there. I don't know where they cut through the wood. Uh, it's quite well, it's not thick at all actually, but just this just, just go through this spruce here and try to get onto them or actually just say blow it, just go out wide, up, and come down onto them. And I'm getting right into the wind there. So I'm just trying balancing the it all up really. My gut says go high. My head says actually if we just, just, just go through there we may just see them 
Um, they may have just spotted us, so we're quite a long low way, but I know they're slightly, they're looking up a wee bit. So, you know, I think by the time we get on, they, they should be pretty well settled, so. Yeah. This is where you need a cup of tea. There's one sitting down. Yeah, one, two sitting down, one standing up. Can't quite see what they are yet. But the problem they got is actually getting onto them. I expect they're about 300 metres away, but the ground drops away. Probably go back and long a bit and have to take another look at them. But uh, I think what we do is have a have a bite to eat just to calm ourselves down a wee bit and have a rethink. But yeah, there's two stakes at the top there. I think some hinds bit below. We've just seen the animals we've been trying to stalk for the last three hours. Over there. I'm pretty sure they never saw us, but I don't know what it is, something's winded them or they were stuck just over here and we're in dead ground for about an hour. Um, we're going to head straight into the wind now and there's a valley down the bottom there about half a mile, three quarters of a mile away and we're going to just go roll down the top of the face of the, of the hill and hopefully we'll see a few beasts maybe just sheltering in the, next to the burn there. Um, we've got about two hours of daylight left really so we need to just, just get on there and see if we can find something. But anyway, that's uh, stalking for you. So, uh, I say Ruck's Nugger Rifle needs to improve. I think we're on plan C or D or E. I don't know which one it is at the moment anyway, but uh, we've got a cunning plan. There's a couple of road deer about half a mile away on the other side of the burn. They're just neatly tucked up. On the, on the leeward side, so I think all we can do is just tab, it's quite steep down here, we're just going to tab down here and get along there if we can and um, see if we can get onto them. We've got the trees to contend with as well, but that's not a problem at all. But uh, you can feel the wind, it's really pounding us from behind, the, the mist keeps on coming down. It's getting a bit cold anyway, so we need to move on and uh, let's see if we can get onto them and see if we can get ourselves a, a road because uh, they're not wanted in this part of the, uh, of the plantation anyway. <laughs> yes, one mustn't forget actually is the road is a bit lighter and we've got a, <laughs> we've got a long way back. The range finder says they're 150 odd yards away so spot on. My, my um, rifle zeroed 150 yards so I think what we do is I'm just going to belly down a wee bit and just get a nice stable position on an open area and just take our time. They seem very very happy just to just move to, our, to the left hand side so I'm just going to just uh, wait up and take the shot when we can. I think you're about the other way now, aren't you? Come on, don't. Okay. Okay, about to shoot in a minute. Yeah. Okay. Okay, on the second one at the moment, it's on the right hand side. It's still moving. Yep. Still got that one. Okay. Okay. A reasonably straightforward shot. A lot of waiting to do. The road kept moving between the trees. Couldn't get, couldn't get onto them. I suppose the 3006 is slightly overkill for a road deer, but we're doing a job here. We're on a management cull. They need to go anyway. So, uh, uh, a quite an interesting stalk in some ways. As I said, they. they we thought they'd seen us, had to wait um, 15, 20 minutes and just got onto them quite nicely and went and just waited and waited and waited until, uh, until they presented themselves. The youngster presented himself first, just went straight down and the, and the mothers ran up the bank a wee bit and came back as they normally would do and took her as well. So uh, yeah, a good clean kill for both, both animals and a you know, good job done for the, the foresters. So I think the boys will be happy. I wonder where we are. It can only be Scotland. Uh, Robbie, Tim, how you doing? Well, we've got a couple of uh, small substitutes for you. We've got, got a couple of road here for you. <laughs> so, okay, so we're right down the far end where you talked about those birch trees.
think about gralicking them, both the beasts here, but we've got about a 300 yard drag. It's full of uh, peat and heather and gorse and God knows what else. So I think my choice is actually just to drag them along the side of the, the yeah. burn here than to the track. So uh, yeah, I think it's probably the most practical thing just at the moment anyway. Thank you, Tim, and thank you, Robbie, the round trees, professional deer stalkers and talkers. Now, from Scotland to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. First up, Field Sports Scotland is Seeker Hind Hunting in the Highlands, Winter 2018. It's a cold job on Game Management Scotland's ground. Mario Toys of Paloma Hunting in Switzerland is, I think, one of the best hunting video makers in the world. This is only a trailer for a rental film on Vimeo, and it is a bear hunt, but it is sensitively and cleverly done. Hunter Brothers are the new German big game sensation. Here is a film by another German channel, the excellent Dreis Pross, featuring the lads Paul and Gerald Weilman about a two-day driven hunt in East Germany. Driven hunting in Belgium now and Wilt Jäger is out with Axel Mays and Michel van Huypen. Short and sharp but with optics companies under pressure from the BBC to abandon shooting sports here is Hunting with Leica on the Leica Sports Optics Hunting Channel. Our old friend Lucas Mikalev captures some impressions of a wild boar hunt in a trailer for what he tells me will be a longer film. American hunting TV host Melissa Bachman travels to Spain for her very first Gredos Ibex. She is out there with a TP hunting adventures. Back in the USA, here are a series of high seat action shots at Adobe Lodge in San Angelo, Texas. Siegfried's hunting channel films his dad taking his first buck and a doe, his grandfather killing a buck and a doe, and his friend Dave taking a doe. And finally, I have done this. It's California Coyote Calling, and this one is with West Coast Predator Hunting, a quick morning trip that ends up producing 10 coyotes. That's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the I symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film, you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv well that's it for this week if you haven't done so already please pop over to our website fieldsportschannel.tv where you can go to our shares page fieldsportschannel.tv slash shares you can also like us on facebook you can follow us on twitter you can subscribe to us on youtube and without parting with any cash at all you can just pop your email address into our register page our constant contact page and we'll contact you about this show field sports britain it's at 7 p.m uk time every wednesday and this has been field sports britain good hunting good shooting good fishing and goodbye